Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Hello, I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Ruth. And you're listening to the Professor Podcast. Awesome. And so what we thought would be a fun way to start it would be to start with a relevant quote from a celebrity professor. And so Claire is giving us that quote. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop her death. If you aren't as big a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. That was Professor Snape from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, if you weren't already familiar. So Ruth, why did you pick this particular quote? So I picked that quote because Professor Snape is, as we all know, turns out to be awesome. And I love Alan Rickman's delivery in the movie. And I feel like that's not the message I'm trying to send to students. But a lot of my concerns about the first day of class is setting the tone. And he does that in what he's trying to set the tone for. He does that beautifully in this moment. So that's why I picked that quote. And setting the tone is a very important aspect. Our topic this episode is the beginning of the semester, starting off the semester. And so, um, yeah, what what did you come as something that's working well for you with starting the semester? And and how does it relate to Professor Snape? So one of the things, the first thing I guess I think that's been going well for me is in a physics classroom, there's a lot of fear and stress. And then there's a lot of overconfidence or, you know, there's just such a mix of how people feel coming into the classroom. And so the first thing I'm trying to establish is respectful behavior and then some kind of community in the classroom and just some connections. So what I've been doing is having an assignment before the first day of class where students like we use Canvas as our software for the classroom, introduce themselves to each other on a discussion forum Mm, and I take they have to put three images that kind of relate to some aspect of their story where they call home what's the name they prefer and then they have to reply to each other and I had to do this in a course and it irritated me no (laughs) end I was like this is so stupid but it did help on the first day because then you see people and you know who they are and so then I take one photo from that each of them picked and make a slide and when I do that, I'm trying to say something about who's in the classroom. And like sometimes people come in and they think I have nothing in common with any of these people mm. and then realize like so-and-so has three kids or so-and-so is from here and I'm from there and trying to kind of have that consciousness of the other people in the room with you. Yeah, that makes sense. And so it's been working pretty well. And then I lead into a discussion about respectful behavior and making sure that everybody feels safe to contribute and having them come up with norms of behavior and so they come up with things which really surprises me because at first I thought they would be like let's have no homework or let's end class Uh you know 10 minutes but they don't they come up with really thoughtful things that's great yeah so I really appreciated that well there are lots of things in there that I'm interested in so do you do this in all your classes I do and sometimes for the upper division ones I've been playing with having them come up with like a physicist that they feel resonates with them and sharing that as well, Mm -hmm. but not in the intro one. Mm -hmm. And do you find that they interact with each other within the canvas site? They they do because it's graded and it's super artificial and I know that, (laughs) but it still helps somewhat. And it kind of, there's been things, one thing that really was not something I anticipated, but somebody shared in that forum that they had Asperger's Mm. and they described what other students could expect from them in class and how to, and that blew my mind. And that was because obviously they don't need to disclose this information, but they felt comfortable doing that. Uh And it was just so helpful because I think other people could have interpreted their behavior in a certain way, but because they had this information, it really changed that. That's great. Yeah. And then what kinds of, um, What kinds of classroom rules do they end up coming up with? They come up with things like the biggest one is not to talk in class. Okay. And I'm really, it's really much more effective than me saying it. Uh And they often say, 
like say if someone asks a question don't talk while the professor is giving an answer because other people want to hear that sure and not to have noisy food it was another one noisy food noisy food yes apparently but again all this stuff would just be so like not resonant with them if i say it right of course and the other the main one that people say is not to be mean to other people's questions those sound like great things yeah yeah it's way better than what i would come up with (laughs) and how long i'm just thinking of concerns that i might have before implementing it how long out of the class does that take for you to do that this whole show that I do kind of takes the whole hour mm-hmm. because I do like when I go through the syllabus and I do a lot. I've had some really like classes go completely sideways before <laughs> and really not establish those kind of norms uh-huh. and had people sneering at people. Uh-huh. And so I really spend a lot of time like the, almost the whole first period goes over to kind I of see. those expectations. Kind of nip it in the bud. Yeah, Totally. That sounds good. You can't, you can't try to change direction. Yeah. Once the classroom dynamic starts going one yeah. way, it's really <clears throat> a lot of momentum. Yeah. I like your physics reference. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> try to throw in physics yeah. when, when I know something. I'm going to try and get you back with chemistry. <laughs> yeah. um, um, and what about you? So, my beginning of the semester thing that's working well is um, it actually started because at the beginning of last semester, it wasn't working well. And Ooh. it was. Um, that I had left making the syllabus and like planning out, you know, all those normal pre-semester things you have to do, I left until the last minute. And then it was really just a frantic start to the semester. And so I said, okay, not doing that anymore. And what I did was last finals week, um, I made my syllabus, I made my Canvas page, I even published my Canvas page with the syllabus on it. And, um, And that really just made everything a lot more comfortable at the beginning wow. of this year, this semester. You're blowing my mind and reminding me that I have not made this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, good. See? Wow. Yeah. So, and it really was nice. I did have to change my office hours because of some weird thing, and so I had to do that minor change in my syllabus. But other than that, I just hit print. And I, you know, going forward, I would, I even want to do more of that. Like, finals week, you know, I mean, it's so tempting to just say, okay, I'm done, but if but I'm already going, you know, so that's, it's a good time to... But don't you think that's so meaningful? Like the biggest thing I think students pick up on is preparation mm. and whether you're prepared or not. Mm. But the fact that you're even like already percolating on what's going to happen next semester, that's cool. And you know, some things in particular that were a lot easier, like I have this field trip and I hadn't scheduled it before. Um, and so it was a big, you know, unknown. How do you schedule it? Is the date going to be available? And what do I do if it's a different date? So getting that done before, that would have been, if I was doing that right now, I'd be much more stressed out that than is right now. That is really, really cool. Also, I'm glad physics people, we don't go outside. <laughs> we don't have to do field trips, but that is super cool. So, yeah, I'm excited. Going to try to keep it up. I need to put a reminder in my calendar for finals week this semester to actually do it. And But I do, and like, I don't know how exactly, but I feel like that like is reflected to the students even if they don't Mm. really know okay Mm -hmm. you went and did this in finals week like Mm -hmm. just that sense of I'm totally steering this ship and (laughs) everything's fine and everything like that really does come across in those kind of things of course there are other things that just occurred to me this week I was like oh I didn't get what if I don't have this chemical I need or something right but but what if you didn't have a syllabus ready as well as not having the chemical right that is very Mm -hmm. cool I like that a lot cool so what area are you trying to work in with respect to beginning the semester it's almost the same thing as what's working well like and this is why like professor snape's sort of the hero because he does establish so much of himself on the first day right and i i get really anxious about class and like the night before yes because it's just so much about how's it gonna go Uh and you know those semesters where it's just like i said gone totally sideways yeah like it feels like and I think I put too much Mm -hmm. into like how this magical first Mm -hmm. class will go Mm -hmm. so sometimes I have a hard time with like fully getting respect I Mm -hmm. think because I think I come across like a little I don't know what like I've had students kind of candidly be like oh yeah when I first met you I was like there's no way this can be my (laughs) business professor and so kind of establishing Uh some authority from the get-go yeah maybe not dunderhead style but right and then the other thing that i actually i think i've talked to you about this before is getting information about pronouns Ah, in a way 
that isn't like I've heard of other students told me that in classes where they were told to just stand up and say their pronouns mm-hmm. and they're not comfortable right. sharing that information. Sure. And so I don't think that's something I want to put in the discussion forum. Right. Because that's public or yeah. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? Um, well, the pronouns thing, I got a cool tip on that. Um, and it was in general starting off the semester by asking the students to tell them or tell you three things about themselves, but on, on a note card. So Ooh. nobody else saw it. So um, you pass out note cards and everybody writes their name as it is on your syllabus. And so then you they, can find so them. So you can mm-hmm. find them. And then you also say, write your name as you'd like me to call you. So that could be simple like Chris instead of Christopher, or mm-hmm. it could be um, a transgender thing like you're saying. Yeah. Um, or it could be going by middle. It could be any number of things. And then the other thing I like to put on those cards is three things about yourself. It could be anything. And then I reciprocate and tell them three things about myself and what to call me and stuff. And you could also put on those cards, what is your pronoun? Yeah. Um, and then you know, and you can use the proper pronoun. And if you, I don't know, you could even put on there, I, I haven't thought about this before, but you could put, is it okay for me to use this pronoun? I yeah, I like that because yeah. then in class, like, do you feel okay for me? You okay, I like that. Yeah. Maybe that's something, and maybe I wouldn't like need to do the things about yourself but maybe just like at the end of class like that's i like that a lot that's cool yeah the things about yourself thing is just something that i like to do but that's not really related to pronouns of course yeah and then do you go through and read all of them i do i read them like normally shortly after class but of course at that point i don't know who anyone is Um, true yeah and so usually i read them just to get an idea of is there anything that i really need to watch out for um is somebody super interested in this thing or, oh, I need to remember that Chris goes by whatever. Um, But then throughout the semester, once I get to know them a little bit better, I might say, oh, let me look back. I don't remember who, what this person's name is. Oh, nice. Okay, so you still have it as a... Yeah, so I just, they're just, I actually have several past semesters just in my desk. Cool. So, yeah, I've enjoyed doing that, but I think it would work really well with the pronouns. Cool. Look at us solving problems. Solving problems. All the first episode. (laughs) So tell us about what's the thing that you want to work on. Okay. Um, Well, first I just want to say, as far as setting the tone on the first first day, I think about that too. And I always have a dream of like, I forgot to print out my syllabus and it's day (sighs) one and I'm printing it as, you know. Yes. And then um, one semester I did print my syllabus early, but... Somehow my fly was down on the very first day That's of class. That's so magical. So How that wonderful. Great. So anyway, that yeah, is a tone you're setting. This it's is true. Not the, one it's not the tone I was aiming for. Yeah. Okay, but my thing about struggling with the start of the semester is um, is office hours and oh. when to schedule them. Yeah. So people say lots of things about office hours, like you should offer them at varying times of day so that more people are able to come, um, and that makes sense. But it's a little confusing. For me, with my schedule, you know, so there's there's lots of factors to consider. There's what is the best time for the students, which you maybe don't know. Um, some people pull their students, I've heard, and then pick their office hours based on the poll. See, but that then, makes me so anxious because yeah. I feel like you're kind of committing to. And what if you can right at those times? And then it seems like people, some some faculty, then get resentful. They're like, "I planned my schedule based on what you wanted, yeah. and you're not coming, or something like that." Um, so then the other option is you just schedule them when it's best for you, you know, with some, you know, you don't schedule them at seven in the morning or something, but, um, and that's generally been a good philosophy. That's normally what I do. What if, can I make a suggestion? Uh-huh. So I, d- I've done this once and I haven't done it recently, uh-huh. but it worked then uh-huh. was to like really say, these are my office hours by the end of the week. Let me know if there's, you cannot attend any of ah, them. Interesting. And then. Like, you're not committing to changing it, but you could... If somebody... Yeah. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. And I have this freakishly small class this semester, mm-hmm. which is good. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about, you know, on Google Calendar, you can do, like, to find a meeting time with someone, uh-huh. you can type in their name. Yes. And see. And so I don't know if that's practical for you in mm-hmm. like terms of class size. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So I do, I have two classes this semester. One of them only has 12 and it's the class that meets four times a week. So I thought I want to make sure that they can all attend my office hours. And so I did look up all their schedules and there was one time, almost everybody had lots of availability at 1 p.m. So I said, okay, 1 p.m. But then 
there was some recent change in rules that was saying you should offer them at varying times because of that. And so I got an exception. It was all fine. But anyway, that's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a tricky it's question. So, yeah, that's, that is tricky. But that's, I love your idea of asking them, mm. saying, hey, if any of you can't attend any of these. Because also they might have other commitments that aren't classes, you know. Yeah, totally. And yeah. So I don't know those at all. And that is something I think we struggle with a little more at our institution, that a lot of our students work and right. they work a lot. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that yeah. we should have a whole episode about office hours <laughs> and luring students into office hours. Yes, it's true. Yeah, that is. Sorry, I don't feel like I have much. No, that's my... a good tip. And, and yeah, what I ended up doing is just going for the consistent time of day. But I did, you know, normally I go for what works best for me and then try to see if there's any problems. Well, and I, think... I don't know if that's... There. As you said in our promo or uh-huh. trailer, like sanity is a big thing. Mm-hmm. And I have had semesters where I just pretzel myself. Mm-hmm. And then I do feel so grumpy at the students. Right. And they're not, not helpful. Right. And they're not telling me to do that. Uh-huh. Like I'm doing it myself. Yes. And then I do get kind of feel resentful. Totally. And so I think having. That's my overarching goal for this semester is boundaries. Boundaries. I like, love it. And not just even with, like, with my day. Yeah. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you have... Having lunch. Yeah. Having lunch. Going to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom. Don't forget. I do sometimes. Oh, well, I told you last semester I got a kidney infection. Ah. And it's just... But I've talked to so many people who end up having to, like, pee for four hours (laughs) because you didn't get a chance to go before lab or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So boundaries going to the bathroom going to the bathroom love it that's a great place to start it's, i'm so glad that's where i ended up on the first day it's like yeah. oh man yeah good i like it me too yeah all right i'm going to put a note in my calendar for finals week to make my syllabus great and i'll send an email to my students asking if they can come to or if, if they can't come what will i say i'll say if you can't come to any of these office hours please let me know yes. in the first week yeah yeah I might That's get a, a black one. cape and sweep into the classroom. <laughs> like, I love oh, Professor Snape. Yeah, that could be good. Yeah. 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 Well, Gotta awesome. Set the tone. Well, thank you for meeting with me today. Oh, thank you. Good luck with the beginning of the semester. I know. Well, well we can report back we'll in the next back. episode. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, if any of you listeners have any thoughts on these topics um, or have any suggestions about future topics, we would love to hear them. And. We do not have an email address yet, but when we do, we will put it in the notes and you can email us there. Awesome. And let us know if you have any special celebrity pod- or professors that you want us to reference. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.